We now move forward to our 2019 Business Leaders winner. Please put your hands together for Miss Helianti Hillman. Thank you for having me here, and this is an honor, humble to have this award. And I think this award is not only for me, but it's also the resilience of all the indigenous farmers that you know keep our heritage alive. So um, going back to 12 years ago when I started, don't get me wrong, I'm not an agronomist, I'm not a food technologist, I used to be an entertainment lawyer before. So as you see, the way I see it is that I'm still acting as a manager, except that this one, my artists are the farmers, the foragers, and the fishers. Um, so um, 12 years ago, I just happened to be lucky enough to be invited in the network of indigenous farmers uh, because they have um, been facing a lot of um, they have been criminalized by big companies because their lack of understanding in reading the contracts. So they have been misappropriated. So I was there as a friend, as a shoulder to cry on, but because I love to travel, I love to cook, and I love to eat, as you can see. Um, <laughs> It seems like when I went to their um, homes and you know live in with them, and you know, uh, and they guide me through to the wonderful uh, food gardens that they have. I was just simply amazed. I was like a kid going on a toy store. And uh, it's just so excited until they gave me a challenge because they see how excited uh, I have been. And my husband and I was traveling for three and a half months to visit all this network and learn more about what we have. Um, <clears throat> so, oops. So this is the starting point. Being someone who really like a foodies and like to cook, looking into all these wonderful flavors, all wonderful nutrition and all those kind of things, this is something that we cannot let go. So I was 
you know, I, I don't know what to do because this is not my world. And, I, and we receive a challenge from all these old farmers who at that time, most of those that we acquainted is above 60 years old. And they say, how can we keep this alive to the next generation? All of our children doesn't want anymore to become farmers. They left. They left to the cities and this become extinct and forgotten. And I was thinking out loud, and I said, like, the only way we can keep it alive is to bring it to the market. Let the consumer participate in keeping it alive by sustainable consumption. Because I believe if there is a sustainable consumption, there will be a sustainable production. So I, we started to embark on this so-called forgotten food, how to commercialize and bring this forgotten food to the market. So I went to my dad, who happens to be an um, agribusiness professor. So I come with the plan, and then he looked at me, and he said, like, girl, if you're going to do this, within two years, you will go bankrupt. <laughs> because there is no such market validation for bringing forgotten food to the mainstream market. Nowhere in the world, there is no such market validation. And I was like thinking and thinking, but this is too beautiful. This is too nice. This is too good. You know, I just could not get it off from my mind. So I went to my mother, and she said, like, if you believe in what you're doing, going to create a better future, do not listen to your father. <laughs> so I think that's the best advice I got from my mom. So why biodiversity matters? It matters for the environment, it matters for the farmers, and it matters also for the consumers because now consumers are facing so much challenges with the diets, and our biodiversity answer that. So we will be at a great loss if we don't keep this alive. So this is what we do, but it's not as easy as it looks. So um, they say like my role is to do the marketing and create an access to market. So I did. I was waiting at the end of the tunnel, and it never comes in. <laughs> Apparently, they have problems with working capital. They are facing climate change, crop failures. There are so many things. So that's why we decided to move throughout the supply chain and try to see where are the gaps, and we try to fill in the gaps as much as possible. And then what happens is market grows. The demand grows beyond our expectation. But then we have another problem, because apparently Indonesia are losing 500,000 farmers every year. And 70% of our farmers is above 55 years old. And then we, as a company, never able to get a financing, because bank always ask for fixed asset collaterals, which we don't have, so it limits our growth cell. And then, if I put um, our products in the supermarkets, it doesn't talk because our products need the communication, need the storytelling, you know, needs an education. So this is where we started to realize that we, you know, stumped into problems. So we try to address the issue. First, we realize we have to invest on the future. It means how to make farming sexy and hip and do a reverse urbanization, making young people go back to the villages because we create a sexy business opportunity for them. And, um, and then we realized, I think it was also spoken with uh, the previous uh, speakers in the morning, that it's easy for the digital companies to raise one, but not us. We are the most ancient businesses in the world, right? So I said like, okay, why don't we digitalize ourselves? So now we are in the progress of digitalizing our ways because we believe digital economy is also democratizing the access to the market. And we realized that we need to have our own store and restaurant where we can create a stage for our farmers and foragers to tell their story. So we have a school. So three years ago, we decided to create a school of rural entrepreneurship where we bring in farmers, uh, children of farmers from around Indonesia and train them to be food entrepreneurs. And this is the store and restaurant. If you happen to be in Jakarta, Semarang, on Bali, feel free to visit. And then you will learn uh, the whole experience of the food culture of Indonesia. So this is the three areas that we have. So we want to expand this because we realize, yes, we do distribute to the supermarkets, mainstream market, but consumers need experience. 
They need to be empowered. They need to learn. They need to understand that even consumers is actually have a politics. Their politics is whatever they choose to consume actually change the whole supply chain. You have the right to make decisions. And whenever you are mindful in choosing what you eat, where it comes from, how it is being produced, whether it's ethical and providing good sources of economy for the producers, then basically you are doing the politics in the food system. Thank you.